Peace. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to another Track Life interview session. My name is Sarah, and here I'm interviewing Dane Amar. So today we're going to be just talking about his career and where he's going in the music industry and things like that. So first, congratulations on being our artist select for the month of August. Thank you so much. Um, it's an honor to be here for real. Yeah. So what inspired you to start making music? I want to say I started for sure at like 12 years old. And then that was when I got my first microphone. And I, I was just watching tutorials on YouTube all the time about like, oh, how can I uh, make music better? You know, how where can I get instrumentals or beats and all that? And yeah, it's just seeing all these other rappers on YouTube kind of come up around that same time, around like 2009, 2008, like uh, D Pride, J Rise, like all these other Asian, J, uh, Asian rappers was uh, really inspiring to see. And I thought like, if they could do it, I could do it too, for sure. That's awesome. It's great that yeah. kind of like you, your personal identity is like is a part of your inspiration and in your career. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so how did you learn to create music? So I'm like completely self-taught. I, uh, I learned a lot through uh, YouTube. So YouTube University. I uh, do elementary school and like middle school and stuff. I was in like middle school band. I, I used to play the trombone. I, I was like, I used to play guitar in like fourth grade, but then I put it down because I just uh, didn't, couldn't afford to buy a guitar, like an actual one that the school didn't lend. And uh, I don't know, I've just always been interested in music and I've always tried to find a way to make stuff. Uh, once I found out that you could just buy a mic and you could like kind of download programs illegally online uh, <laughs> and like just make them work for you, it, like really expensive programs, uh, my life changed. So I just found it all out through like YouTube and, you know, blogs like Reddit and for whatever was around at that time. Yeah, I don't think people realize how not easy, but accessible it is to be a self-starter in this type of industry. And yeah, kind of it's, uh, yeah, for sure. It's completely insane. Like not even just music, like learning anything. Like I, uh, I'm an official video editor. Like I, I, that's one of my full-time jobs. And uh, I learned how to video edit on YouTube. So, I, I mean, now it's like completely paying for everything I do. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, YouTube you. really started like a renaissance of creatives just kind of developing their own music and it's great. Yeah, definitely. I love to, I love to see it. I love to see it. And you see a, a lot of TikToks and stuff now about like people recording in their cars and like, mm -hmm. you know, you could record anywhere. Like that's not new though. Like that's everywhere. Like, you know, not to say anything, but like I, I recorded my biggest song in my car. Like that's just, yeah, no, it's cool. It's really <laughs> like dope. Like people are like opening their minds and like seeing, seeing it now. Yeah, it's great. So what is your creative process like? Um, I usually start with listening to the beat or a loop first. And then um, I just kind of write like that. Like once I hear that, I get the melody straight up. And then once I get the melody, I go uh, straight into writing. I write pretty quick. So, you know, words just kind of come to me when I'm in a zone. I don't really try to force anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm usually not the type of guy to rewrite. I'm, I kind of like, I feel like if that's what's meant to be, that's what's meant to be. Like uh, for the full song, done with the full song. And someone's like, oh, you should rewrite the second verse. Usually I'm like, it's cool. I might just make a new new song, you know, like, yeah. oh, it's fun. Like if that's what I really um, put down, it's, that's what's yeah, meant to be there. Yeah. That's and you a really cool way to look. can't recreate the energy. Yeah, exactly. And the energy you had, like when you made that song, you can't really recreate it, you know? So mm -hmm. if I, if my whole intention for that song was, oh, I have to finish it today. I don't really, I'm not the type to be like, oh, I got to go back. Unless like, I don't know. I feel like I should. Who are your biggest influences? This question is so hard because I have like so many and like <laughs> it, it's such a big question, you know, like I have influences of like all time, which is like Drake, Tupac, you know, Nipsey, the, the regular people, you know, uh, John Bellion, I think is like an amazing songwriter. He's a pop artist, but he, go, he goes crazy. Kanye, obviously. As of right now, people I, I'm super inspired by OGZ, AZ Chike, Draco the Ruler. Um, I'm inspired by a lot of the the up and coming Bay Area artists too, like EBK Jabo, EBK Young Jock. Um, you know, I'm pretty tapped into the California underground, and uh, you know, I'm inspired by all the homies too, Leo Chow Main, Sahi, uh, hella people. Like I'm just facing on names right now, but I'm just inspired by everyone that's working right now. It's really cool to see like all my friends working. Um, so 
this is a little similar to a previous question, but how do you go about explicitly writing a song? Um, so it really just depends on the song, you know, like if I'm writing a, a green tea and honey type song where it's a love song, then it's usually like, what's the most cliche way I could say this, but it's still like kind of player, you know, like mm-hmm. kind of smooth, like, like it's kind of the way I say it, you know, it's not, not like, like, yeah, anyone can say a really cheesy pickup line, but it's kind of the way you approach the line. You know, if you say it like a joke, you like say it like that. So that's why in my songs, I kind of like being more playful when, with the rapping and like a little bit more silly, like, kind of silly with it. So when I'm writing the song, I'm like, OK, how can I like what is going to show my personality the most in the track? And what would like I personally say seriously or as a joke? So how would you describe your music? This is also like the hardest question for me because like. <laughs> Right, like the biggest song that I have right now is a pop song. And I know that, and it's dope. I love making pop. I'm not saying anything bad about it. But, uh, you know, I kind of grew up in California. I grew up off rap, went watching one of Houston Park growing up. So like rap is like where my heart like lies. Mm-hmm. Rap, hip hop, R&B, like that, that's completely me. Pop, R&B, super dope. I love making it. Um, and, and it's a part of my identity. It's who I am. But uh, I guess when I would describe it to someone, I would just be like, it's a, it's like a rap, pop, R&B hybrid. It's like, it's like if Justin Bieber made a song with like Drake or the Ruler, you know, <laughs> like really, yeah. really different things. Like if Nipsey Hussle and like, and Justin Bieber were on the same song together. Like I, I would hear a song on the radio by Shawn Mendes and be like, damn, what if Lil Durk had a verse on this? Like, that'd be crazy. Like Lil Durk would go crazy on this. I know. <laughs> it, it's things like that. It's like, a, it's kind of like to be a young boy on What's Your Name. Like no one expected that. But then once NBA came in, they were like super shocked. Like, uh, that's kind of how I go about my approach with music. And I would describe it by like just a hip hop, pop, R&B hybrid. That's awesome. And I feel like there's such a big push and trend recently of artists not really having to confine to like one genre and kind of exploring all different genres and having very different types of music, even on one project. So I think it's really admirable to be able to create like a cohesive body of work, but still, you know, maintain that difference in genre between tracks mm-hmm. no nah, definitely exactly and that's why I like my recent album East Ego Pop Star like uh I, I do do the songs that people know me for like more acoustic love songs but you know I also have some more rapping songs on there I have like my little sing rapping stuff on there I have my little west coast stuff on there <laughs> um my R&B stuff like you know I, I'm really trying to define myself as an artist and I think like uh, so I'm finally getting to the point where nothing's like it hasn't clicked yet but I know if I keep like going in this direction like something's gonna click where I'm gonna be able to comp- combine all these sounds together and finally get to where I want to be but just yeah. gotta keep pushing for it um what about your music do you consider unconventional uh it's so you know like the whole Drake thing in 2009 when he came out everyone was like he was too soft you know oh so I think uh not you know not to compare myself to one of my biggest idols Drake but uh you know, I, I feel like my music's really soft too. So like my music coming out to like a gangster rapper, he probably not feel it, but I do have the more street shots to me too. So I feel like one, when I find a way to combine the two completely where I can do like the uh, the rap stuff with the really pop stuff, uh, that'll be like a wave. But as of like right now, what people consider unconventional is how pop I can get. Cause I can get really pop and then I could just get like super hardcore at the same time. Mm-hmm. So we talked about this a little bit with like YouTube and TikTok a little bit, but how has social media impacted your music career? Social media is like, it's a blessing to have because I feel like, you know, being able to connect with the fans one-to-one, I I can, I try to post like at least, I don't know, a few times a week, if not just to always try to stay connected to the fans and like always have a face read dms from fans saying that like you know your song helps me get through the day stuff like that like it really makes me want to keep going so it keeps me motivated and me making more videos and songs of me making songs every day keeps the fans more motivated a lot of fans hit me up saying that i'm the reason that they're starting music careers which is crazy i think that's amazing everyone should start a music career because i <laughs> really don't know what happened like it, one song could really change your life like it, it you know you everyone can say you're bad but if you i mean all you need is one <laughs> so, so true and it's yeah I, social media is such a great way to connect with fans and kind of get their feedback and filter that into your music it's a really great way to kind of give and take 
and, and it's the best way to, to like see your analytics you know if you're your own boss you can see what everything's popping like my biggest social media is actually spotify so you know it's kind of cool that my music is the reason that i'm known uh, i most of my followers are on spotify not, not instagram or anything so people really follow me for the music which is what i would want i, mm-hmm. I don't want to be like i do want to be a big art i want to be one of the best artists one day one of the most known artists that's that's obvious so how have you evolved so since the beginning of your music career Oh man, I guess it's just like, I started so young. I started at 12 years old. So this has been like wow. my life. Like mm-hmm. people don't really understand. Like I, I like, uh, you know, my mom didn't get it. No one got it. But like when I was, when I get about something, like I'm obsessed about something. So I was obsessed with, uh, with video games before rap, but I was like super obsessed. Like I would like sit inside a GameStop until like they told me I had to leave. So, so I've been there for like six hours, seven hours, just kind of hanging out. Once I found out that I love music, I was doing the same thing or at like another music store um like so i feel like it's just the evolution of me growing up as a man too you know mm-hmm. uh, i i just kind of learn things uh through music i uh, uh the rooms that i'm in now uh i needed to be in different rooms before to kind of evolve and get my skills to talk to people better you know communication skills are super important in music you need to be able to talk to people. Your, your sales skills need to be good because you need to sell yourself. You're, you're a product. You are like everything you need to be. So if you're trying to be like your own boss, you really need to be your own boss. You need to have like the look and everything, you know, the, like the chains and stuff. This is cool. I love, like, it's really nice to have this. I wish like, you, you know, like uh, it's cool. I like it. I probably like moving forward in life. It's not going to be the biggest thing, but the look important is super important right now. Yeah. That's such like, uh, right, like exactly. That's such an interesting thing to kind of hear you say and just there's a lot of like honesty and authenticity in what you've said just because you're you know while you are trying to make it in this industry as naturally as possible there are also it's a game that you have to play at the same time. Yeah yeah, exactly and like you don't always have to play there's a lot of rappers who don't but I mean like in the lane that I want to be in like you have to because I want to be like I want to make songs with Lil Durk. I want to make songs with Young Thug and stuff. And they all like, you know, that's what they talk about. Talk about going to Icebox, spending this much money on it. I'm not there yet, but you know, maybe I'm, I can manifest it in these songs right now. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, and I guess like evolving is uh, since the beginning, I believed in manifestation a lot when I was younger. So what's crazy is like seeing it all unfold in my eyes, like right now. Like I told myself, like, you know, I'd always move to LA one day. I'd live in an apartment, like have a studio in my apartment. Like everything's just kind of, you know, just going one by one by one like right in front of my eyes so um yeah manifestation is power um evolving since a kid was just always manifesting and knowing like what I want and this is what I want yeah I think it's definitely one of the best ways to kind of achieve success is just like convincing yourself that you will have it and just manifesting it for yourself because a good attitude produces good results so that's a really great way to kind of like push yourself forward and always be positive in your career. So what are some challenges you faced in the music industry? Um, so as of right now, it's really hard to get past the whole acoustic, like my whole acoustic sound. Cause that's like my biggest sound. That's like where people are finding me out. Uh, people are like listening to those songs more and more of the acoustic love songs, pop songs, which is awesome. It's great. Uh, you know, that's not all me. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a multidimensional person. And I love the fact that people are like, like our other artists are kind of breaking the walls of having one genre, because that's kind of what I am. Like, I don't feel like I am just one genre. I'm not just pop. Like I am this rap. I am R&B. I am anything I want to be. I'm an artist. You know, I just kind of make music. I don't feel like I should confine in a box. I just want to make the music I like to make. Like if I'm inspired by a country pop song tonight and I really want to make one, I'm going to make one, you know? Yeah, of course. I feel like the best music artists can make is the music they're passionate about. They don't need to confine to yeah. one certain thing. As of like, you know, right now, this is what I'm saying, but the, the most stuff that I face is just a lot of people turning down wanting to work with me because they're not looking for a pop artist. They're not looking for an acoustic pop artist, you know, like, oh, we love your sound, but like, we're not you know, we are not sure how to push it. We don't think it's going to be that big, which is cool. That's cool. But that's not my only sound. And that's kind of what I'm trying to break through right now. Mm-hmm. And I will break through it. I know I will. Because, you know, the music speaks for itself, in my opinion, not to be cocky, but I work really hard on my music. So the music kind of speaks for itself. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I think it's 
So many people call confidence like that being cocky, but I think it really is just being confident and knowing that you're worth it. And again, like manifesting that and channeling that energy. So I admire that. I don't think it's being cocky at all. (laughs) So my next question is, um, what are your ambitions as a songwriter and musician from here? I just want to get better. You know, like I know I'm not, and you know, to be the best, you have to work with the bone writers. I really want to get in a room with Max Martin one day. I really want to get in a room with Rick Rubin, Pharrell. I would love to be in a room with like Tyler. Just see their whole creative process. You know, even if I'm not on the song, seeing geniuses work, you know, that's what I really want to do. I want to work with these great songwriters. Um, so my goal is just to sharpen my skills and get to a point where, you know, people label me as one of the best. People are like, oh yeah, have you seen Dana Moore? Like, that's like, that guy's crazy. Like his writing, his pen game is dope. Like, I want to work with other songwriters, uh, like for my songs, for other songs, it doesn't matter. Like, I just really want to get in that collaborative effort. Um, so I guess my ambitions right now is to be one of the best, to be one of the greatest, but to also work with the greatest out now and just uh, keep pushing, keep, keep going. So what are your plans for any future releases? So I just dropped my uh, my project, East Dago Popstar, and you know, that's doing really well. I'm about to do a deluxe version. It's coming out maybe in a month or two. I'm just still getting some features in, but I'm just trying to get more features on. So I got like the homie Matheos. I got Michael Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao's son on there. Uh, I got, um, I have a lot of different people. I have this guy named Me Yu. He's out in Thailand, super good. Uh, got Sunari on there. Yeah, I'm just trying to get a lot more people. I'm trying to get like a, you know, just a lot more artists on there and just get my name out a little bit more. That's great. So what is some advice that you would give to anyone looking to make it in the music industry? Um, so for anyone who wants to make it in music, I would suggest just keep going. I've been, ma- I've been making music for about 12 years, and I didn't start seeing this big of progress until last year. And that was like 11 years in the, into making it, you know? I put my 10,000 10, hours in. You never know when you're going to blow up. You know, you can't expect it. If you chase to make a hit, you're never going to make a hit in my opinion. So, you know, fall in love with the process, fall in success is putting the song out. I would just keep, keep dropping as much songs as you can and just let the people decide what they like. Great. So what is one message that you want to give to your listeners? Uh, I hope everyone listening is safe, healthy, good. Uh, I know these past like year and a half, almost two years now has been like immensely draining on all of us. So I hope you guys are all good. I hope the music's been providing you guys with a bunch of stuff to listen to, to just, you know, vibe with and get you through your day. And I hope you guys make memories to it. I hope you guys have a great time and, you know, just keep following your dreams. I'm very, as long as you just keep the goal in mind and just keep pushing. Love you guys. Thank you guys for listening. Such a great message. So I guess um, I just another final question, um, just a big grand summary is um, what does your music say about you? I think, you know, I think my music is me. I don't, I don't feel like, you know, cause I don't ever see myself being without music. I think when you hear my music, you're going to hear who Dana Mar is. You're going to hear Eastside San Diego. You're going to hear, you know, growing up, getting shot at because I look the way I look growing up called a flea. You feel me? Like, like you're going to, you're going to be, hearing my messages and what I went through but you're also going to hear like you know other things of life because my life wasn't always hard you know there's there's love I fell in love a few times you're going to hear about that you're going to hear about the times I fell out of love you're going to hear about the times of just being me times of just you know being sad reminiscent of missing my sisters being out in LA getting closer to my dreams but farther from my family you know you're going to hear the evolution when you listen to me I think when you listen to my music and what it says about me is just everything about me that's awesome. very personal. Yeah, I try to be awesome. Awesome. it's like thank you your own your personal own. diary almost. In exactly. Your music. And that's how and that's how I treat. So my house was in a drop out at eleven. That was when I just knew in my head, like you know, I got to leave a mark. I want to be someone one day, and I just kept pushing for that. Be a voice for my people. I want to be a voice for my section, and uh, that's what you're gonna hear in my music. The voice of Eastside San Diego just blasting out to the world. That's great. Well, thank you so much for letting me interview you today and congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. I had thank such you, a thank time you. talking with you. Um, you know, hey, internet too. issues aside, it was still a great interview. Thank you. So um, congratulations again on being Artist Select. 
very and much. Everyone, um, look forward to an article that I'll be writing on Dana Mar up on Track Life soon. And thank you so much.